very much for inviting me to give a talk on this uh, very uh, nice conference on quantum field theory and uh, geometric geometric representation theory. So myself, uh, it's, uh, for me, I'm, uh, my uh, field is mostly on quantum field theory. And uh, uh, some of my recent work involves a lot of uh, geometric representation theory, although definitely I'm not just a beginner on learning something on geometric representation theory. But uh, uh, my recent work showed that there were, there were uh, a lot of interaction between the quantum field theory and the geometric representation theory. And here I want to report uh, some progress uh, of my uh, recent work, which uh, linked the a uh, fixed variety of uh, affine spin fiber and the uh, representation theory of uh, uh, W algebra. Uh, the link is uh, uh, made through the uh, quantum field theory. Uh, so first, uh, this talk will be divided into three parts. The first part is uh, on uh, the relation between wild Hitchin system and uh, the Coulomb branch of uh, so-called Archer's Douglas series. And in the second part, I will uh, talk about the, the so-called affine W algebra and the sure sector of Archer's Douglas series. Uh, in the third part, I will talk about the uh, relation between affine spin fiber and the re representation theory of uh, uh, W algebra. Okay, uh, in the first part, I will uh, first uh, review some uh, basic facts of uh, four-dimensional uh, ankles to superconformal field theory, which uh, is the underlying uh, field theory that uh, uh, underlying all these uh, recent developments, the, all the uh, subjects that I, I'm going to talk about. So this class of field theory uh, uh, has made uh, important uh, contributions to uh, physics and the mathematics and the mathematical physics in particular. So this class of theory, uh, I, I, I think Madalena probably will uh, give a much more uh, server introduction. So here I just uh, uh, want to uh, point out some of the main uh, features of uh, this class of series. So first of all, uh, this series has a symmetry group. Uh, the bosonic, here I just use the bosonic symmetry group, uh, which is SO2 comma four times the uh, U1R times SU2R times the uh, GF. So here SO2 comma four is a uh, conformal Group, four dimensional conformal group. So our theory has a uh, conformal symmetry. And also uh, we, uh, for, for this class of theory, it has a, a interesting class of uh, asymmetry which will uh, rotate the supercharges. So for this class of theory is uh, U1R times SU2R. And here GF is uh, the uh, global symmetry but this uh, symmetry might be absent. So some of the theory might not have uh, any uh, non-trivial global symmetries, but the, all the anchors to superconformal field theory uh, would have uh, the conformal symmetry and the R symmetry. So those are uh, the, the SO2 comma four symmetry and the, the two R symmetry are universal for any uh, anchors to superconformal field theory. Uh, the representation theory of the underlying angles to superconformal algebra was uh, uh, well studied. And uh, uh, some of the, uh, the, the most important uh, subset of the uh, operators or, or the representations are the so-called short representations. And uh, for us, there were two important class of uh, half BPS operators. So one class, uh, which is usually uh, denoted by B hat R, 
uh, these are called in the literature, these are called the Higgs bench operators, and the R denotes, uh, denotes the SU2R representation type. This class of uh, operator doesn't transform under the uh, U1R symmetry group. So it only transforms under the SU2R symmetry group. Uh, the top component of this uh, model is a, a scalar. It's a, so it doesn't have any uh, any uh, it doesn't have any uh, uh, spin. The other class of uh, half EPS operators are the so-called uh, OR operators. Uh, these are uh, Coulomb bench operators. And the small a small R is the U1 R charge, and uh, there's the unitary bound. The uh, R is uh, required to be bigger than one. And usually, uh, in the in the other cases that we know, R is uh, actually a uh, rational number, positive rational number. Uh, so one more comment: just, uh, for the for the Higgs bench operators, the form a ring, and uh, the, the this chiral ring are uh, uh, complicated. And the, for the but for the Coulomb bench operators, uh, in almost all the examples that we know, uh, they form a uh, free generated ring. So, so to determine the uh, the Coulomb bench spectrum or, or the set of Coulomb bench uh, chiral ring, uh, all we need to know is uh, these uh, rational numbers. And for the angles two theory has interesting uh, modular space of uh, backup. Uh, so in, in for for this uh, class of theory for for four dimensional angle two theory, it has a uh, Coulomb bench, and also uh, sometimes it also has a Higgs bench, and uh, uh, we we might also have a mixed bench. Which uh, is a direct product of a uh, Higgs component and a Coulomb component. So this is the uh, structure of uh, uh, modular space of uh, vacuum of a generic four-dimensional angles to theory. Uh, here I uh, want to point out the name Coulomb uh, comes from the fact the the low energy theory. At the generic point of Coulomb bench, it's given by a leading gauge theory. So, so at the low energy, we have the mass this uh, photon. So, uh, that so the interaction is uh, uh, given by the uh, Coulomb law. So that's why we call it Coulomb bench. On the other hand, the 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 for the Higgs bench, the, the this name it comes from the fact that if we have a Gauge theory, lama building gauge theory, to begin with, and go into this branch, you typically uh, fix all the uh, gauge groups, and there's no gauge group left. And so we have the uh, standard Higgs mechanism. So uh, that's why uh, usually it calls the Higgs branch. That's the name, uh, which has a physical meaning here. Okay, so the central question of uh, solving a four-dimensional angle two CV is to uh, determine the low energy CV at every point of uh, modular space. So what we we like to determine so uh, giving a a point on uh, the modular space or a particular vector, uh, we would like to determine uh, all of uh, determine the low energy physics. That's the uh, central question of starting a four-dimensional angle two theory. Now, the the solution on the Coulomb bench actually is uh, solved by finding a, a Savitin geometry. That's the famous work of uh, Savitin did. They uh, showed that one can solve the Coulomb bench of a four-dimensional angle two theory by finding a Savitin geometry. And the Higgs bench has a hypercalar structure. So uh, 
of course, we, we like to find the metric on it, but uh, uh, in general, uh, that's too difficult. But the important information could be found by uh, finding the coordinate ring of the uh, hypercalar manifold, for example, it would be useful to find the generators and the relations on, on this bench. Okay, so above is uh, the general introduction to <coughs> a gentle introduction to uh, four-dimensional angles to superconformal field theory. And uh, here I'll talk about the class of uh, theory which are called the uh, Azure Stoglas theory. And those theory, uh, they, I, I don't think there were some formal definition of what it is. But the, the one of the distinctive distinguished feature of uh, this class theory is that the the uh, Coulomb bench operators have a, a fractional scaling dimension, or equivalently, they they are equivalently they are there's a, a, a rational the Coulomb bench operators has a, a label uh, R or uh, the the equivalently. Are just dogs means the Coulomb bench operator has uh, fractional uh, uh, scaling dimension, not integral. So uh, that, that's the distinguished feature of this class of theory. And these theories are in general uh, strongly coupled and uh, have no Lagrangian description, which means uh, one probably cannot study them using uh, conventional uh, perturbation theory. But on the other hand, th these theories are a lot more generic than the theory with the integral scaling dimension. Uh, since, uh, I mean, obviously uh, Q, uh, the, the set of rational numbers is bigger than the set of uh, integral number, integral number. Okay, so uh, although the, these series are strongly coupled, one can actually construct a lot of them using various uh, um, methods. So there were three main methods that I'll talk about. So first of all, the uh, originally the Arjun stock series are found at certain value of Coulomb bench of a, a Lagrangian series. So this is how uh, this class of theory uh, was originally found by Andrews Douglas in 1995. Uh, this method uh, later on uh, it's uh, generalized by by I remember correctly by Japanese school. The uh, generalized to the to, to, to they found a ADE class uh, ADE class classes. Uh, but definitely, uh, these, these are not all of them. Uh, and uh, also, this method uh, is a uh, sometimes it's a little bit misleading. Uh, it's, it's also difficult to to extract the, correctly the the low energy physics. Uh, but then I was uh, realized uh, that one can actually engineer a lot of uh, such series by using type to be string theory on a, a threefold singularity, uh, actually a special kind of singularity. Uh, I think this probably originally did by Witten and then uh, made it more systematic by Wafa and Shapir. And uh, lastly, and the, the, the the, the, the main class that I'm going to talk about is uh, the method uh, which initiated by Gaoto. And the later on, uh, I uh, use this uh, so-called 60 to come up zero construction uh, to construct a, a large class of new large stock class theories. So that, that the third class is the, the most uh, uh, that is the one that I'm going to talk about. So here's a picture that uh, I hope uh, you can find it useful. So basically, uh, 
uh, I start with a six dimensional theory, uh, six dimensional two comma zero theory of uh, type J, one of type, and the 62 comma zero theory has only ADE uh, type. And uh, then I put it on a sphere, a P1 with one uh, irregular singularity and one regular singularity. And the meaning of the singularity will be uh, uh, discussed soon. And the irregular singularity is labeled by, by phi and the regular singularity is labeled by F. And then uh, there's actually uh, the four dimensional space time that I, I, I ignore here. So, um, so uh, in, in this construction, the a, a, actually a four dimensional survey now uh, is labeled by uh, this data, three data. Uh, the, the, the classification of uh, those data, the, the, the regular and the irregular singularity are systematic study. The regular singularity is specified by a uh, you know, potent orbit of uh, J equal to ADE. The uh, irregular singularity uh, is captured by the uh, singular boundary condition of Hitchens equation. So we're interested in the, the following type of singular boundary, boundary condition. Uh, here, phi is the homomorphic part of the Higgs field in the Higgins equation. And uh, uh, it's leading out, takes the, this particular form. Uh, here, uh, T is a regular semi-simple element of E algebra. And uh, uh, a K is a, a infinite sequence of uh, uh, integers, which uh, it's restricted to be bigger than minus b. So this uh, uh, this singularity is a, uh, a irregular singularity. So it's all the pole bigger than one. And the important thing is that this uh, denominator b is actually restricted. So here the restriction of b. So for the a type, there's only two classes, and the D type also two classes, and the uh, E6, E7, E8, there are also two classes. Uh, well, for E6, there are three classes, E7, two classes, and the E8 also has three classes. So interesting, we, together with the E5, we found that there's a, a correspondence between the uh, irregular singularity that we were interested in and uh, the uh, threefold singularity. So there's a one-to-one -one correspondence between that. Now, uh, there's a, a one more generalization. We can also turn on so-called old automorphism twist. So we can get a long simply list flavor symmetry so in general, we have the following picture. The, 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 we have a P1, we have a sphere, and the, and the, the type J and O. And uh, J is an ADE type. O is uh, uh, the uh, automorphic twist. And the uh, phi, uh, Phi is a irregular singularity, F is a, uh, Phi is a, a, a irregular singularity, F, uh, is a regular thing at. And then uh, oh, here's a list of the automorphism and uh, uh, the uh, invariant subalgebra and uh, the flavor symmetry that we will get. 
Now the Higgs field now uh, uh, Higgs field takes the following form, and uh, uh, phi uh, still takes the similar form with uh, the uh, so-called uh, the untraced uh, class, and uh, uh, the uh, regular singularity is uh, labeled by now it's labeled by the Neopotent orbit of G, which is uh, the Langlands theorem of event part on O. So this is a one more uh, generalization, so we can get the non-simply list uh, D group. The also there's a, a classification on uh, the denominator B traced BT. Now here's a, a list. And uh, uh, also, uh, we made a correspondence with uh, uh, some uh, singularity, so which which is a, a little more subtle than uh, than the untraced case. Okay, so uh, uh, here's a summary. So basically, uh, for the class of series that we are going to consider. Is a uh, it is a uh, is uh, uh, labeled by the following data. So why is the so called irregular singularity? Uh, this irregular singularity is labeled by a uh, four data. One is the DER algebra than the auto the trace, and also uh, a infinite sequence of number k, and the B is a very strict data. Uh, in fact, the, the, the this is linked to the representation theory. The this uh, J O B uh, is uh, classified and is related to the uh, classification of uh, positive grading of Lie algebra. That's a uh, probably the the first link to the representation survey. And then the uh, regular singularity, on the other hand. It's classified by the uh, neopotent orbit of uh, the uh, Langlands theorem of the uh, invariant part of J and O. So uh, basically, the, the the point I want to make is given such a the uh, algebra data, we can associate a we can associate a four-dimensional n equals two, uh, and then uh, one can actually uh, extract a lot of uh, interesting physical information out from uh, out of uh, these sixty constructions. The first of all, the the Coulomb bench solution can be found from the spectral curve of Hitchin system. So here we have this uh, famous spectral curve, and uh, uh, for 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 the uh, previous classes, the our theory is a uh, super conformal, and there's a u one r symmetry, and this u one r symmetry uh, rotates both z and x coordinate, and then one can actually find the spectrum Coulomb branch operators from the uh, spectral curve. Or, or uh, uh, in general, we can uh, find the uh, all the set of rational numbers too. R the, the rational numbers are that we uh, mentioned earlier. Also, uh, the the flavor symmetry uh, can also be found from the geometry uh, from the, the the regular singularity. If the flavor symmetry can either come from the regular singularity, uh, which which can be read from the neopotent orbit. So here is a, a here's two uh, extreme cases. Uh, if uh, uh, G F is trivial, uh, if if F is uh, the maximal neopotent orbit, or uh, G F equal to G, which is the Lie group. Associated with uh, J or, or the next two of J or 
event part if f uh, is trivial. But there are also uh, flavor symmetries coming from uh, irregular singularity. And sometimes uh, uh, there will be no flavor symmetry. Those without flavor symmetry will be uh, important later. Now here's a, a class of examples that people mostly study. Uh, we take F to be uh, regular neopotent. Uh, then uh, we also take J to be A M minus one and the B equal to N. And then the spectral curve at the CFT point takes the following form. So X N minus K to zero. So this, this curve will uh, appear later. And uh, uh, here uh, NK is taken to be copi, then there will be no flavor symmetry. And the, 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 the U1 R charge is realized by a uh, sister action on, on uh, the X and the Z, Z coordinates. So X and Z coordinates. So uh, by a important normalization, we make X, the, the, the normalized the charge of X and Z will be uh, these numbers. So uh, in the literature, this is called the AM minus one, AK minus one uh, theory. Uh, okay, so now uh, I'm going to part two. So in the in the uh, first part, we constructed a large class of Azure Stoga theories, and uh, they are labeled by some uh, the algebra data. And the, the Coulomb branch solution can be found from the efficiencies. That we mentioned earlier, to, uh, we also we would also like to understand the, is the Higgs branch. The Higgs branch uh, is more difficult to study as we don't have the uh, powerful surveillance technique. And in fact, we will be interested in a, a, a larger class of shorter operators called the sure operators. These operators, uh, this, this has sure sector includes the uh, Higgs operators, but they have more. And because of the important uh, 4D angles two and 2D VOA correspondence, one can solve the Sure sector by finding a corresponding 2D VOA. So this is a, a very important work by B. Namos, Theodor, Pinus, Rastani, and uh, Pernus. So their work reduced to the, reduced the understanding of uh, Higgs branch to finding a to find a or, or sure sector to to find a, a VOA. So here's a summary for the correspondence. So there's a Kasmudi uh, subalgebra in two-dimensional VOA uh, for each uh, four-dimensional flavor symmetry. Uh, here G is a algebra four-dimensional flavor symmetry. Uh, this, this is the first uh, correspondence. For the second correspondence, uh, this is uh, the most useful to find the Correspondence, the numerical ones. For the for the 2D VOA, we have a central charge. And also for the AKMR, we have a level. And these two uh, 2D data is related to the 4D data by uh, the following formula. So C2D equal to minus 12 C4D, and the K2D equal to minus KF, which is the flavor central charge of 4D. Flavor, center, flavor symmetry. So in many cases, or at least in all the cases that I uh, considered earlier, the uh, one can compute C40 and the KF by uh, various methods. We, we can compute it using uh, 
four dimensional masses. And then we can use this to uh, predict the, or to find the candidate of 2D uh, viewing. The third important uh, uh, correspondence is that the, the vector character of 2D VOA uh, is the so called uh, uh, 4D uh, true index. So, the, the, this true index counting the counts the true operators. So, once we know the 2D VOA, we can use this uh, vector character to predict the true index of 4D. Uh, the fourth one that I want to mention is the uh, a social variety of uh, VOA. So this is the one uh, defined, this notion defined by our cover. And uh, uh, the social variety of VOA can be uh, identified the Higgs function of 40 angles to safety. So this is also uh, this made, just discovered by uh, Beam and Okay, so this is, this are the, uh, uh, correspondence. So, so we we uh, can solve the short set once we uh, find the two D VLA. But in general, there is no uh, systematic way of uh, finding two uh, D VLA. But uh, if, if we start with a four D angle two theory, so well, but we uh, have studied the. Uh, 2D VOA for the AD series considered in last part. Uh, the, the, there were a lot of uh, lots of work that we uh, did. Uh, so uh, here's a summary. So uh, uh, first of all, if there's no uh, mass parameter in irregular singularity, then the 2D VOA is given by the following W algebra. Uh, here, uh, uh, K prime is the level of uh, W algebra, and it's uh, uh, given by the value uh, B and K. So remember, uh, we uh, our famous pic picture here. So this is our this is the label of our theory, and there's a K B uh, encoded in the irregular singularity. And given that data, uh, we can find a W algebra. So uh, important class is when uh, B equal to Dukov's number. In this case, uh, the level uh, uh, of the W algebra equal to minus H check plus H check over K plus H check. And this, uh, the, the corresponding W algebra is called boundary admissible W algebra. Uh, this class of uh, W algebra uh, has many uh, interesting properties, but I want to uh, point out that the, the not many of the W algebras appear in in the uh, this forty two D corresponds are actually not admissible, so they are uh, not studied. Uh, they're little studied, I would say. But, but it, it seems that they're also important. And when there were, there were mass permit in irregular singlet, the VOA is found at the coset of W algebras. Okay, uh, representation theory of W algebra can be uh, systematically studied by the Greenfield Sokol reduction. Uh, Mostly for the actually for the admissible W algebra. Uh, this starts with the alpha and Kasmudi algebra, uh, which uh, corresponds to the uh, trivial regular puncture in our case, the, the trivial orbit, I would say, trivial regular orbit, trivial orbit for the for the label of regular singularity. And and uh, the admissible representation of uh, the, the alpha and Katamuri algebra is systematic study by Kass and Wakamoto. Uh, in our picture, we, we have this uh, following uh, interesting Junefield uh, Sokolov reduction. So on the one, hand, one side, we have a, a, a theory 
which is labeled by the same irregular singularity and a regular singularity, which is labeled by the trivial orbit. And then we have the so-called uh, closing puncture operation, which means we uh, change the uh, label of uh, regular singularity and go, go into a different theory. So this uh, Genfield Sokolov reduction has an uh, interesting uh, uh, field theory uh, or 60 construction, 60 picture here. Uh, this, the, the two dimensional VOA is useful for the study of uh, four dimensional angle to theory because it can tell us the show index for this theory. And also, uh, we, one can uh, determine the uh, Higgs branch factor of the mixed branch. Or, or I mean, the, the, uh, one can determine the uh, so the Higgs branch by uh, finding the associated variety of uh, 2D BOA. On the other hand, the four dimensional theory is also useful for the study of 2D BOA. Uh, one is, uh, especially some of those BOA which are not uh, well studied in the mass literature or in, or in the 2D BOA side, one can use uh, some four dimensional method to determine the vector character. And also, uh, one can uh, use the four-dimensional method to determine the associated variety of uh, many of the double uh, algebras that uh, haven't well uh, haven't studied by mathematicians. Okay, uh, finally, let's uh, let me go to uh, part three, uh, which. Uh, somehow uh, link uh, these two branches. So we, we have uh, identified the, we have studied the Higgs branch and the Coulomb branch of the AD series that we studied. And uh, we say that the, the Coulomb branch is solved, the, solved by Higgins system with the data. So we have this uh, uh, Lie algebra data. Uh, and also we have a associated Higgins system. And there's a corresponding Higgins module space, which has a Higgins vibration. And uh, uh, the, the base of the Higgins vibration is identified, identified with, with the Coulomb, Coulomb uh, branch of the 4D theory. And the spectral curve of the Higgins vibration gives a Siberian curve. So the Coulomb branch of our theory uh, is elegantly, elegantly solved by, by the Higgins system. On the other hand, the, the Higgs or the Schur sector, Schur branch, is given uh, by a 2D W algebra or the co set of W algebra. Uh, although these two branches are very different and uh, it seems they, they do not have uh, obvious relations, but they, they do have some hidden relations. For example, one can compute the central charges using only the Coulomb branch data or using the uh, Higgs branch data. And these two computations should give the same answer and this will link those two branches. The, these two computations will uh, give some constraints. Uh, Similarly, one can actually compute the Schur index using the Coulomb branch data. I think this is a work by Chakoti, Wafa, Wenping, Yang, and uh, J. Wang, and other people. So it seems that the, these two uh, branches actually are related. And then in the, in the third part of the talk, I will discuss a further relation between these two sectors. Okay, so first of all, let me talk about the Higgins fiber at orange. So for the Higgins vibration uh, pi, the genetic fiber is a uh, smooth and it's a abelian variety. And physically, this means that the low energy theory is just uh, 
a bit engaged in them. If the fiber is singular, on the other hand, new massless degree of freedom appear, and the no energy theory is more complicated. And the most singular point is the uh, uh, safety point. We might take it as the origin of the base B, and the structure of the heating fiber is most complicated. So in the in the usual case where the, the, the usual heating model is the this I think this uh, fiber probably is called the neopotent cone. But in our case, we also have a, a, such a, a space here over the most singular point of the uh, of our uh, survey. And there's a sister action on heating module space, which is a U1R symmetry corresponding to four dimensional uh, anchor, uh, due to the four dimensional angles to uh, symmetry. And there's an interesting work one can uh, by 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 these people, Fatrisk, uh, Pei, and Yang Yi, and Lightsky, Fatrisk. They showed that one can uh, identify the uh, fixed points of cis direction uh, with the ordinary representation of corresponding W. So this is the, the link that they found between the two branches. They, these fixed, fixed points are, uh, on the Hitchin module space are useful to compute the cohomology of Hitchin's module space. And uh, we want to uh, find a generalization of this work or a a better way of computing things. And then we find the, the use of this uh, alpha and spring uh, fiber. The, as, I, as I said, Hitchin's fiber at orange seems too complicated. And uh, for the purpose of computing cohomology, one might replace it by the so-called alpha and spring fiber. Uh, alpha and spring fiber is proposed by Carter and Nuzdik has the analog of the spring of fiber. And uh, the link between heating fiber and the uh, alpha and spring of fiber, I think, probably due to angle. In, I, I don't uh, know much about that work. Uh, but here, I, I simply uh, recall the definition of alpha and spring of fiber here. So let F be the field of uh, uh, formal Laurent series in uh, variable t, in one variable t, and uh, uh, OF be the formal power series. And that G be a reductive group, and G, uh, small g be is a uh, Lie algebra. And we have the, the for physics, we're, we're familiar with the, uh, the loop group, and uh, uh, GF be is a uh, Lie algebra, which we, we we're familiar with uh, this. This is the familiar alpha and Kasmudi uh, algebra, things like that. Okay, so uh, here, and then we, we uh, let gamma be uh, uh, a regular semi simple element of uh, the this, uh, loop D algebra, and the uh, alpha and spring fiber of type P, uh, it's the reduced closed subvariety uh, inside the uh, alpha and flag variety. And uh, the definition is that the, the uh, actual action of a generic G uh, acting on this uh, element uh, should belong to the lead group of a uh, Pyrrhoric subgroup. So here P is a pyrrhoric subgroup, and R is a Yuhori subgroup. Okay, so uh, to, to, to make uh, to link the uh, link our previous uh, uh, construction, the RG Stoker survey. In that in that part, I mentioned that our survey can be uh, labeled by the algebra data. And here, this alpha spring fiber is actually also labeled by the algebra data. So we have a D algebra, or in, in more general case, we have an auto-automotion twist for, for, for the twisted loop group. 
and a pyrrhoric group P and a uh, element gamma in the uh, I-Fandy algebra. And the, uh, the identif identification with the, uh, our previous uh, data is uh, uh, following. And then the, the G and O, it's, the identification of G and O is obvious. And then this parahoric uh, uh, Sorry for the interruption. Um, so uh, when you try to highlight the sentence in your slide, there is a solid rectangular block which kind of hides the sentence. So uh, uh, you're not uh, able to read the sentence after you highlight it. Uh, could you use a different okay. uh, method of highlighting? Okay, okay, okay. Thank yeah. you. Okay, yeah, sorry. And this P, uh, P is uh, related to the Neopotent orbit. Uh, we, we call that one can actually associate a parabolic uh, subalgebra for a Neopotent orbit, Neopotent element. So these this three identification uh, is uh, uh, simple. So for example, uh, if P is a Uahori subgroup, uh, we have the uh, four regular puncture or, or in the uh, previous label, uh, this gives the maximal flavor symmetry. But if P equal to the GF itself, we get the uh, the uh, trivial flavor symmetry. So there's an identification here. Uh, then we need to identify the elements gamma with uh, the irregular singularity type. Uh, since we our theory has a U1R symmetry, we actually need to consider the alpha and spinger fiber of homogeneous elements. And those are elements are uh, uh, studied by uh, Oblomov and the ring. And we also need to consider the regular semi-simple elements, uh, as we always do. And the interesting enough, such elements are also classified by two data, a slope, uh, new, because of K over M, and the positive gradient of the art. So, so, so uh, basically, uh, the, their work shows that the, the this interesting uh, elements with the interesting alpha and spring fiber is also uh, the same as the one we use in engineering uh, four dimensional algebra stuff. So what what I the point is here the point here is that for for the algebra stock series considered in part of one for every one of them there is a associated alpha and spring fiber. It is a slight uh, shift of the uh, numerical data in uh, in case and the uh, uh, our our number. Okay, so uh, we can further consider the case consider the irregular singularity without any mass permit and. Uh, uh, on the spring of fiber, on the F1 spring of fiber side, this means uh, uh, we take gamma to be a elliptic ones. And also we restrict it to the homogeneous uh, uh, element. And in this case, the associated F1 spring of fiber has a sister action. And one can uh, consider uh, is fixed point variety. And then in some cases uh, is fixed points. And the equivalent cohomology of uh, those fixed of, of the uh, alpha spring of fiber. And uh, together with the Pen Shai and the Wen Bing Yang, we found that the uh, cohomology of fixed point variety of alpha spring fiber is actually in one to one correspondence with the ordinary representation of W. So this correspondence is useful as the representation of. Uh, some of W algebra considered above is unknown. And uh, uh, on the alpha spring fiber side, it seems that one can uh, easily compute them. So here's an uh, example. Uh, if we, uh, we consider this particular 
a d c v with uh, the data. So we have a j s of three, and the four is this uh, uh, evaluation singularity, and f is trivial. And then the corresponding V O A is the boundary admissible Kazmudia artifact. And on the affine spring fiber side, the number of fixed points are found by uh, K plus three square. And the number of ordinary representation of V O A is also K plus three square. So in fact, one can actually make a one-to-one -one correspondence as there were explicit, explicit description on both sides. On the double arch plus side, we have this admissible representation by uh, cars and Wakimoto. And on the affine spring fiber side, there were uh, combinatorial description by Oblomov and Yi. Okay, so uh, I, I uh, due to the time restriction, I, I, uh, I ignore a lot of uh, computational details, but uh, the nice thing is that one can actually make uh, lots of explicit computations. Okay, so finally, I want to make some uh, speculations about the uh, uh, interpretation of uh, the, uh, the third part. Now for a three-dimensional ankles for superconformal field theory, and the asymmetry is uh, SU21 times SU22, we have a Coulomb branch and a Higgs branch. So in the 3D sense, in the 3D case, this uh, Coulomb and Higgs, the name uh, actually is ambiguous. They're, they're not really a uh, really, uh, physical distinction between them. Uh, but uh, the, the so-called sim symplectic duality gives some uh, equivalence between certain categories as uh, associated with the two branches. So that's my interpretation. Now, uh, in our case, we actually consider the circle compatibility. And uh, now we, the circle has finite radius of a four-dimensional angle to CFT. Now the resulting uh, effective theory also uh, has a Coulomb branch. Now this Coulomb branch uh, is, is uh, also hypercalar, but uh, uh, it has a compact direction. For example, uh, it has a it's now uh, has a abelian variety of vibration. So, so which actually described by the uh, heating heating module space in our case. And also we have a, a, a Higgs branch or, or short sector. Now, uh, on the Higgs branch or the short sector, there's a uh, one one has the so-called representation category of double algebra. So uh, the question is, uh, uh, is it possible to define certain representation category using the Coulomb branch of uh, circle compatible for this set? Not, not a purely 3D set. Uh, if this is the case, then uh, the correspondence we found here might be sort of as a generalized uh, symplectic duality. And it, if this works, uh, one can one can uh, go in uh, one can go even further. We might study uh, the uh, torus combination of five D angles from CFT and uh, things like that. And we also have the correspondence involving uh, some kind some kind of Langlands device. Because on the affine spring fiber side, is actually defined using the uh, twisted loop algebra. On the other hand, the, the on the double algebra side is uh, is actually uh, related to the ordinary loop algebra G, and the D algebra G here uh, is a Langlands deal of the uh, the the invariant part of J. So there's, there's some kind of Langlands duality here. So alpha and spring fiber, uh, as I as I learned, they, they, they seems very important in geometric representation theory. For example, they, they are very useful in the study of representation of Daha. And here, 
we were interesting enough for for those interesting F and spring fiber, we find an underlying four dimensional anchors to CFT. And uh, I, I think, I believe uh, there, there should be uh, more interesting lessons one can learn for both sides by using this correspondence. Okay, uh, I think I, I finished my talk. Thanks very much. Oh, uh, thank you, Dan. Uh, that was a great talk. Um, so there are a few questions now uh, which have already been asked in the chat box. So what I suggest is I will um, just open up the uh, session for discussion and um, people can use the raised hand, raise hand option and can ask questions themselves. Um, okay, so first uh, Ashwin has a question and he has uh, raised his hand. So let me uh, pass it on to him. Ashwin, can you uh, ask your question? Uh, I saw some questions on the chat bar. So yeah, yeah. Um, yeah Hiraku so asked you for if P yeah. equal to geo for uh, zero orbit. Mm -hmm. P equal to geo for the regular, uh, the, the, the regular neopotent orbit. So the opposite case. So the, 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 the little bit confusing here, but the, for the yeah, maximum. You, you, I, I, I think you wrote G of F, but G of F is full group, so it cannot be parabolic subgroup. So it is a type of G of O, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. P is a G of, yeah, yeah, yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. yes on the on the on the alpha and spring fiber side, we're counting uh, fixed points. Yeah. Oh, I don't know whether alpha spin fiber is easier than hitching water space. That, that I, I, at least from the from the from our perspective, to counting for counting those fixed points it seems uh, on the alpha spin fiber is easier is easier to count. But there's some representation <laughs> way of doing it. We we try to uh, count the fixed points of hitching water space. That seems. Uh, seems uh, uh, too difficult for us, but, but using F and spring fiber seems easier. Uh, so Ashman asked the, yeah, there's, a, there's some, mm, I think that the, the link between the F and spring fiber and the, the uh, global neopotent neopo cone seems, uh, uh, seems uh, uh, established mathematically, some, some relation between them, right? Uh, Satoshi asked whether, whether there's a SL2Z action on the module. Yeah, that's a good question. Uh, I think we see some some hint, but the, uh, uh, yeah, I understand your question on the, you know, there's some more, I would say there were, there actually, uh, the correspondence in a more deeper level, not, not just on the counting of fixed points. It seems that the, on the F and spring fiber side, we have the cohomology ring, and on the W algebra side, we can also define uh, some ring. And uh, it seems that the uh, this ring, in some cases, we can even match the the ring ring structure. You you, you mean if you are in the algebra, you mean on the W algebra side. One can okay, also I define a, a ring. I think this ring uh, is defined by the the uh, by our cover. Uh -huh. Yeah. You, you mean ring is like it's kind of fusion of the module? Like you mean the tensor product of the representation? You mean? Uh. Uh. I remember so on the double algebra set we can we have this the famous Zeus algebra and also Zeus C two algebra. Zeus uh -huh. C two algebra is associated ring. So that that ring seems to in in some cases that ring two C two ring can be uh two C two algebra can be uh identified with the uh cohomology ring in some cases. I see. Yeah. I see. 
Uh, I have one comment. I mean, uh, we can also see the some uh, W algebra, like uh, how does it minimum model representation from the um, that module indeed by using huge module space. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, o only purely W algebra, W minimum model. Uh huh. So that can be seen from huge module space or one function torus. But okay. that's different, different from your story. You, you, you yeah, use yeah, a yeah, fine string yeah. of fiber, but... Uh, yeah. yeah, also the Hitchin module space here, I consider it's very different from... Uh, yeah, he, yeah, here, yeah, here it's more like a general quantization. Uh, you just look at the Lagrangian inside a Hitchin module space and then look at this holomorphic section over the, this Lagrangian. It's more like a Chan Simon's story. Okay. Yeah, from there you can see the the some yeah um, representation of W algebra, but um, anyway. So I mean, you, one slides back, you talk about this. You can see general simplex duality if you if you can construct the W algebra module from H module space. But I I only have one example. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that's a comment. Mm -hmm. So uh, are there any other questions for Dan? Okay, if not, uh, let's thank Dan again for a very nice talk.